What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Spoiler alert, do not continue watching if you want to be surprised at Tesla's Battery Investor Day. In this video, I'm gonna break through what I've been doing for over years worth of research at this point, hundreds of hours of phone calls, Googling, figuring out what the hell Tesla is up to to fix their biggest constraint on growth. This is why I care so much about it. This is why people who want us to go green should care much about it, to go to electric vehicles, to go to solar panels, to get the grid on renewables. We need better, cheaper batteries and way, 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 way more of them. That's why Tesla's my favorite company Company because they are innovating like crazy on ways to build better batteries faster and they are about to unveil in a couple months at September 22nd battery investor day um, some game-changing battery production techniques and so anyway I think I put all the pieces together for Tesla battery investor day um, and how they will scale their battery supply roadmap going forward I'm almost like I feel like I know, at the, you know, I go through waves of being like, oh, I have no idea what they're going to announce to now I'm so sure I know exactly what Tesla's going to announce. Now I'm all the way on this side of the pendulum. So please, I'm making this video for you to tell me why I'm wrong. What am I missing? Um, what else will Tesla announce? Because I think I've got it all figured out. So let's just start with it. Tesla acquires a company called Maxwell Technologies about a year ago. Maxwell Technologies founded in the 60s, an ultra capacitor company based in San Diego. Everyone's like, why the hell did Tesla buy these guys? Are they gonna put super capacitors in their EVs? The answer is no. Secretly, when they were figuring out a way to build their ultra capacitors, Maxwell comes out with a new way to build lithium ion batteries, the same things that are in your Tesla, except now there's a cheaper, better, faster, more reliable way to build them uh, using this new breakthrough called the dry battery electrode. So this breakthrough technology that Maxwell develops as a side hustle to its main ultra cap business, um, they're like, wow, you know, companies like Tesla and everyone else trying to sell electric cars is going to desperately need this technology. It's going to be a game changer. They're touting this on their investor relations, on their conference calls. They're working with a tier one OEM to do a massive deal to commercialize the dry battery electrode, which will be a game changer for the electric vehicle industry. All of a sudden, Tesla acquires them, shuts down the website, everything goes super quiet. So my reading of this, and luckily when Tesla acquired them, there was a few month window where Maxwell was a public company. The deal had hadn't closed. You could read all their conference calls. Um, I mean, this is the fact that Maxwell was public and we got to see them trying to tell their story to investors, selling them on how disruptive this was going to be, is that offered us amazing insight um, into what Tesla is now up to. So my understanding from talking to a bunch of people involved with this is that Tes uh, Maxwell was setting up a production, test production line essentially to be like, okay, we've got this breakthrough to, uh, to build new battery cells with the dry battery electrode, which has skips this major drying process of putting a wet uh, sort of chemical solvent around the battery cell, slurry, waiting for this to dry, takes a ton of time, adds cost, adds complexity, actually makes the battery easier to degrade, or so this new battery method can have the battery last longer. So anyway, Tesla is obsessed with this new production method, is fascinated by it because it solves their biggest bottleneck. They're like, wait, it's not like this is a new type of cell that's being built. It's a new production method. It's a new production method that allows massive volume to be pumped out of battery cell production lines. If you don't need to have the drying ovens, if you don't need to wait for the slurry to dry, it's much simpler. So it's my, my point here is I'm, I'm getting pumped. It's like the Maxwell breakthrough is not about a new type of cell. It's about a way to build the battery cell that's very similar. If you listen to what the, uh, Elon Musk said in the last conference call, you know, 300, 350 miles of range is kind of enough for the sweet spot of EVs. You know, the Tesla Model 3 battery pack is amazing. In fact, in China, they're using lithium iron phosphate cells that are even less energy dense because they don't even need a 300 mile range EV in that market. More on that in a second. But the point being here is, it's not really about improving that core battery pack in terms of more range. It's just about building way more of that same battery pack for cheaper. That is the biggest constraint on Tesla's growth. And so what happened with Maxwell? So they buy Maxwell. There's this test facility in Arizona where they're building up the scale production line to see if these new battery cells can work and they're actually as good as they say they're on paper. Tesla's testing it, apparently gets convinced enough that this breakthrough in battery production is actually legit. This is a game changer. Um, we validated enough to where we don't want to buy you. So they spent like 300 million to buy Maxwell, screw the ultra caps just for this battery production breakthrough. I mean, if you're buying a way to build batteries for $300 million, you plan on building billions of dollars of batteries with that technology to get your ROI back. You might be like, well, why didn't Panasonic? Why didn't, you know, uh, another car company try and come in and buy Maxwell. That's something I'm still thinking through, but the biggest reason another auto OEM didn't is because they weren't selling 500,000 electric cars a year. They're not really committed to EVs. They're not building their own batteries. They're not deep enough in the supply chain to have enough ROI to commit the capital at that stage of vertical integration to go into battery production. It just doesn't make sense. You know, they're, they're barely green lighting any EV projects, let alone a way downstream battery supply chain acquisition that they don't even know what to do with technology wise. And there was also a caveat in that agreement where Tesla was like, you're not allowed to basically show your technology to other companies uh, in the bidding process, I believe. So 
Tesla got to validate this technology for months. No one else did. So that gave them way more confidence. And they had, you know, the highest ROI because they're building the most electric vehicles. Now you might be like, well, why didn't Panasonic buy them? Uh, why didn't LG? Why didn't CATL buy them? I don't know. Maybe it's because they didn't have time to test the technology. They don't move quickly enough. They just weren't watching uh, those breakthroughs. But anyway, Tesla acquires Maxwell Technology. Now we've gotten new, and it's kind of quiet for six months. Then we've started to get a bunch of new news. Electric comes out with a report about a secret project roadrunner designed to get the cost of a battery pack under $100 per kilowatt hour. More and more things start leaking about job postings in Fremont, about battery cell production. Anyway, this all comes to a head when Elon Musk confirms the date for Battery Investor Day as September 15th, now of course September 22nd, but says will include a tour of a cell production system. Uh, Tesla owners East Bay comments, so definitely in Fremont. Yes, so they have a new cell production system in Fremont. So here's putting this all together, and you can even read this amazing test main article that goes through all of this news. Um, and there was even filings that eventually came out that showed this project location on Cato Road. They're now getting authorized to accommodate hundreds of employees to build batteries around the clock, a manufacturing facility. They also had another leak on Twitter about a massive increase to power drawing from that facility, another clue that they're massively ramping up battery production. Um, they even had this interesting little calculation here um, from a Twitter user basically saying that there's enough battery packs at this facility in theory to be due about 13,000 Model Y or Model 3 units. And so tying to this, this all together, Tesla at Fremont factory or near their Fremont HQ is hiring hundreds of employees for this battery production facility. Like we're seeing all the evidence of this in filings, job postings, everything. And then Elon says we're going to get a tour of a battery production facility at, at Battery Investor Day that's in the same place. So this, to me, this new battery production line that Tesla's building in Fremont is in-house battery cell production using the Maxwell dry battery electrode process. The big game changer of this process, they'll be able to build way more batteries, way faster, in a way smaller footprint. So that's the big breakthrough. Um, and and the, actually, the other thing about these batteries, too, is that they're slightly more energy dense, so you might need less batteries to achieve the same range, or the same amount of batteries give you a little bit more range. This is just a symptom of the technology, and this is very unlike any battery breakthrough. Most battery breakthroughs, you know, you're trading off range for charging time or, you know, longer lasting cells, all that kind of stuff trading off. The Maxwell cell, this is why it's such a breakthrough, and they've been touting it as one of the most important days in Tesla history, because it has multiple improvements on multiple facets. Not only is it produced for better, faster, cheaper, Cheaper. I'm thinking a 20% plus reduction in cost when this is all done at scale. But additionally, you're talking about a potentially 10 to 20% boost in energy density as well for the cell. And then what's the other rumor we've been hearing about? This million mile battery. Tie in Jeff Don, the academic in Halifax that Tesla's contracted to do battery research. And he's been fiddling with different battery materials, chemicals, different battery cocktails to try and get them to last way longer. So you team up new manufacturing process from Maxwell. They bought a company called Highbar that builds battery production equipment. Now you've got Jeff Don throwing new wild chemistries at that Maxwell production system to figure out what is the best cocktail to run through that production line. And then the result of that is this amazing new battery cell that is way cheaper to produce, that lasts a million miles, that is also more energy dense. This is the battery cell that makes it inevitable to shift to electric vehicles. This is one of the biggest technological breakthroughs, in my opinion, in the 21st century, because it's not just a science project, it's going to be implemented into millions of consumer vehicles and truly transition the industry off of fossil fuels. So many, everybody should be paying attention to this technological breakthrough. I think it's one of the most important things happening in the world right now is the commercialization and ramp of this of Tesla's new battery cell. And that's why I'm obsessed with it. So Tesla's building this battery cell. Now you might be like, okay, what is the long-term game plan? That's what's happening now. We got a Fremont facility, a couple hundred employees pumping out, I don't know, 15, 20,000 cars worth of batteries a year. What is Tesla gonna announce? Plaid Model S. This is the car I think they're rolling on stage at Battery Investor Day. They've already hinted it's coming out in late 2020. They've already been whipping it around the Nürburgring track, looking boss. So I think they're gonna drop the Plaid Model S. You know, they don't have a very good supply or cost yet of these new battery cell production lines because it's like, you know, still beta production even though they have hundreds of employees. So my guess is they're gonna slowly start putting these new battery cells into the Model S, which is a higher priced car. They can afford those higher priced batteries. They can use that small supply. They're also gonna maybe use this production line to supply the new uh, Tesla Roadster. My opinion is they'll discontinue Model X, but if they don't, they might use this for the Plaid Model X as well. Anyway, the point is, first Fremont production line of these Maxwell cells is going to be for S, X, Plaid mode, and Roadster Plaid drivetrain as well. Then, what are the new uh, major factories Tesla's got? China, Berlin, Austin. 
So I think Tesla's battery strategy is bifurcating from all of the same cells built by Panasonic, one supplier going into all their cars to, to diversifying their batteries um, for different uses, for different vehicles, from different suppliers um, to sort of hedge their risk. And so I think, you know, you still have them expanding with Panasonic. I actually just made a video about that. Um, building cells, the Gigafactory for Model 3 and Y, that's going amazing. They're going to slowly incrementally improve those, but they need way more batteries for Cybertruck, for the Tesla Semi. And what are these two vehicles? They're rugged. They're work vehicles. They're a lot more about economics and ROI versus just getting a cool car that's electric. And so it really matters a lot more about the specs and performance of that battery pack relative to the internal combustion engine competitor. My point is that battery disruption cost curve as batteries get better and cheaper, um, you know, the tail of industries they can disrupt keeps expanding. After passenger cars, we're getting the Tesla semi-truck, Tesla Cybertruck. Where are they building those? They just confirmed it's the brand new crown jewel factory that Tesla has in Austin. So I think that's the perfect opportunity. New facility, new vehicles with higher battery requirements. That's where the new cell is going to go into first. So they're going to scale this production line like crazy, show all investors, be like, look how many cells we're building. Look at the cost. This is the first line we built. Pace of innovation is going to be savage. We're building a better, more automated line in Texas. And we're not just building one. We're building like 10 of them to pump out, you know, gigawatts, terawatt hours of batteries. And they're going to start going in the semi and the cyber truck. Um, and then I also think that in Berlin, Elon did confirm battery cell production there. I also think they're going to bring this new Maxwell uh, cell production there. Like they said, Gigafactory is going forward without battery production on site. Just like in Tesla China, they have battery production on site too. But in, in China, I do not think they will actually start with this Maxwell technology. I think they're going to partner with CATL, which is already what we're seeing them do, and just buy as many batteries as they possibly can for CATL and just kind of partner with them. CATL, you know, Chinese company, domestic supplier. I think that's going to make the government happy. And it's just kind of a win-win partnership there is Tesla sells millions and millions of cars in China. CATL sells all the batteries. Tesla helps CATL with battery business and design so that they can sell the other OEMs in China. Kind of a win win geopolitically and economically for everybody involved. And so I see this as the new Tesla battery strategy. Um, to recap, we have a production line in Fremont, Roadrunner, new Maxwell cells going to Plaid, Model S, X, Roadster. They're going to build like 10 more of those production lines in Austin for Cybertruck and Semi. More of those production lines in Berlin um, to build new vehicles there. Maybe the Model Y will get some of these new v new batteries in Berlin. It could be a better version of the Model Y. And then in China, I think they're sticking with lithium ion phosphate for now and just going to partner with CATL long term. And so, you know, and, and now you might be like, well, what, what about nickel? Elon Musk on the conference calls begging everybody about nickel. So I've been making a couple of videos, shout out to Vivas, interviewed him, actually we used to work at Tesla on their battery materials supply chain team about what the next biggest problem with Tesla's facing is like, oh my God, we need more of these battery packs. Well, we figured out how to build the battery packs. Now we need the stuff that goes in the battery packs. So that's all those rocks that we need to get out of the ground like nickel. And so that's why you can see on the conference call, Elon Musk and the battery team's next worry, their next vocal thing they're thinking about problem to solve is where do we get all the supply chain to run through all this battery production lines because we're already convinced these battery production lines are savage. This isn't just a 1x, 2x improvement in terms of throughput. This is a 5, 10, maybe an order of magnitude improvement in the order of in the amount of output from these lines. And that is the real needle mover here. So that's kind of the point I wanted to make of this episode of all my research has boiled down to the fact that the real breakthrough of Maxwell, even if the cell wasn't better, even if it didn't last longer, was that Tesla can produce a ton of them for a way cheaper price. Price. And this is going to unlock and solve the biggest bottleneck constraint on Tesla's growth. Tesla doesn't have any of these cells going into consumer products today. They're already about to hit a 30 billion revenue run rate. They have so many different products they can't even build because they can't get the batteries. The second they unlock this, they're, they're you know, semi truck vertical, pickup truck vertical, new batteries for the grid vertical, model two, cheaper compact car vertical, eventually cargo ships, planes, buses, trains. I don't know. The point is as this battery gets better, as the supply increases, the potential revenue and earnings power of Tesla increases dramatically. Um, you know, this is the thing to watch if you're a Tesla investor, how fast can they scale battery production? Cause that will dictate how fast the financial scale and that will dictate how fast the value of the company increases. And that is why I think Tesla stock has exploded recently, not just cause they're crushing it, not just cause they're growing when everyone's shrinking, not cause they just prove profitability, but because they're doing that with a legacy technology, they've already disrupted themselves with a much better, cheaper, longer lasting battery that if they commercialize, will take their addressable markets and disrupt the potential from a 20 or 30 billion billion dollar revenue run rate to two or three hundred billion dollars or a hundred billion dollars just from electric vehicles. And this is why the company is worth so much because they hold the key to the future technology that is going to change the propulsion system of the world. And that is this new Maxwell battery cell. That is my theory. That's what I think is happening on battery day. Who the hell knows if I'm right? Um, but I would love to know what y'all think in the comments below. It's probably not going to be my last video before Tesla battery investor day. 
you know, now you're wondering how fast can they scale this new battery production? I don't know. I'm going to let you all guess that. Anyway, huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers, fun in the channel, and all those people who comment and who call me, who send me emails about batteries, schemes, and just all your ideas, all your research that you helped me with, like could not do it without you. So I, I read all of your comments. I love hearing from you. So please let me know what you think below. What is Tesla scheming on for battery investor today? I know y'all have been, have been working on this too. So anyway, see you next time. This is HyperChange. Peace.